Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is the MSI GeForce GTX 650 Ti Power Edition video card. It is of course DX11 compatible and features PCIe 3.0 compatibility as well and like with other Power Edition video cards from MSI, comes with a three-year warranty in North America. That includes USA, Canada, and Mexico. And also, the uh, Power Edition are usually factory overclocked out of the box. This one comes factory overclocked to 993 megahertz compared to the reference 925 megahertz core clock. And uh, as you can see here, inside a package, you'll find an adapter for a um, two uh, female Molex to a single six pin power connector and lifting the compartment in there and to the bottom area where you can find the 650Ti Power Edition manual. This is a user's quick guide in multiple languages. You have a VGA and uh, on one end, and of course a DVI on the other end. It's an adapter, and you also get a uh, HDMI adapter that is mini HDMI on one end and a full size HDMI on the other end, uh, female end on this uh, other end, so that you can connect it to your uh, other monitor or TV. Also, you get of course the driver CD, which includes the MSI Afterburner software you can use to monitor your temperatures and also overclock your video card. Let's put these accessories out of the way and let's take a look at the video card itself. Alright, so here we have the MSI GTX 650 Ti Power Edition video card completely out of packaging. First thing you notice of course is the massive Cyclone 2 thermal design. And uh, this heatsink, of course, uh, we've seen this uh, a long time ago, the first Cyclone generation cooled a very hot video card, such as the AMD HD 4890, which uh, also produced a lot of noise. Of course, this one is cooling the new GK106 Core GTX 650 Ti, so it's a lot cooler. So the fan is not expected to ramp up that much. Also, this fan is the new propeller blade design, which is a lot more efficient and a lot quieter compared to previous cyclone cooling models and as you can see here it doesn't have a stiffening bracket uh, the the heatsink itself is uh, large but it's not thoroughly heavy that uh, MSI has figured that they didn't need a stiffening bracket on the side as seen in other MSI video card models Let's start here with the connector on the front you have the six pin power connector facing the front and here in the rear you get, of course, the outputs in here for the uh, hot air. You also get an HDMI connector. It's a mini HDMI connector, hence the adapter included in the accessory package. You get a pair of DVI ports as well. Which is, of course, the reference design has these three connectors, but uh, some models pro have provide additional connectors. But uh, the MSI uses uh, reference connectors in the back. So get, of course, the more importantly, the PCIe 3.0 connector right at the bottom. And uh, in case you notice that there is no SLI connector, the GTX 650 Ti is not capable of SLI, unfortunately. And uh, in terms of layout, the MSI uses uh, their own PCB and their own PCB design. The reference GTX 650 Ti actually only goes up to here, similar to the GTX 650. They are quite small. All the difference is, of course, that uh, the... MSI GTX 650 Ti uses, uh, has actually the, of course, they have the enhanced PWM design, they have military class technology, and uh, it can withstand a lot more overclocking. And uh, we'll also take a look at, well, I'm actually going to remove this Cyclone 2 cooling solution so you can take a look at the core and uh, let me explain that and also take a look at the uh, PWM system and this video card compared to, of course, uh, you, you're going to see the reference design pop up in other video cards and uh, you can find it online. So let's do that right now. All right, here we can see that the uh, bottom of the Cyclone 2 cooling system is a nickel-plated uh, copper base. See there? And it's quite big, but of course it only makes contact with the core right in the middle. Uh, the core, it doesn't have an uh, integrated heatsink system. So it just has uh, an exposed uh, core itself right there and uh, 
just scratch that. You can see that it is, if you're close, it is actually a GK106, as mentioned, uh, compared to the GK107, which was found on the 650 uh, video card. The 650 Ti shares the GK106 with the 660. And of course, the difference is it has less CUDA cores. Uh, the reference, I think, uh, 923 or 938 for the full uh, GK106 implementation. But this one only has 768 CUDA core units. Uh, of course, uh, the memory also is, uh, you see that the these use Hynix memory chips. And uh, they, are in, they have one gigabyte uh, configuration. And uh, compared to the reference GTX 660, which has two gigabytes, and also the enhanced VW design, you can see here all the military class components that MSI use. You have your uh, you have a three plus one phase here, I can see. So it's, it should be able to overclock a lot better compared to other uh, video cards. Also, they have the uh, triple over voltage function we have seen before in my previous review of the GTX 660 Ti. And uh, which, which allows users to overclock the rather overvolt the not just the uh, GPU, of course that is given uh, 1.175. You can max that out with your slider, and you also can volt uh, overvolt your uh, memory and the um, the PLL, which is uh, of course the PCIe the power of PCIe, so you can control that. As of course for extreme overclockers, provided. Uh, that you have a, a good cooling solution, which of course we have here with the uh, with the Cyclone 2. But if you want to push it with your LN2, you can do that as well. And of course, we should do that now. Let's uh, put this back and uh, let's continue on with our benchmarks and see just how well the MSI GTX 650 Ti Power Edition OCE video card performs.